What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Shantia, and I'm back with another banger, another word, okay? Now, listen, y'all, I got a word for y'all today, but before we get into the word, I just want to tell everybody, especially my new followers and subscribers, that my book is currently still on pre-sale. Pre-sale ends at the end of the month, okay? So make sure you go get your book um, today, this week, this month, before the sale ends, okay? Now listen y'all, um, the title of this video is called um, When Others See Flaws, God Sees Potential. When Others See Flaws, God Sees Potential, okay? And so the Holy Spirit led me to this word. I was in prayer and I was just asking him of what specifically, asking him, of what specifically his people need to hear on today, okay? And so um, this was the word that he led me to, but I stumbled across this passage and it's in Acts 9, okay? And in Acts 9, it talks about Saul's conversion, okay? Or Saul being converted in that moment. And so we all know Saul. And if you don't know Saul, go read your Bible to figure out who Saul is. And so in this specific passage, it talks about how Saul was literally on his way to go take God's people and put them into prison, okay? So take them captive, okay? He was still out there making murder threats. He was still out there, you know, going against God's own people. And yet, even in that moment, God still saw fit to shine his light down on Saul, okay? Bring Saul down to his knees. Listen, child, scripture. It says in Acts 9 verse 4, or verse 3, it says, As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice to him say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me, Okay? Listen, and in that moment, you know, Saul asked, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then Jesus gives him instruction to get up, go into the city where you will be told what you must do. However, in this moment, what happened was that Saul became blind. And so the people that were with Saul led him into Damascus, okay, because Saul couldn't see. And when he gets in there, God had gave um, uh, this disciple, uh, what's his name? Ananias, God had gave the disciple Ananias a vision, okay? And so he tells Ananias to go bring Saul's sight back. And Ananias is like, look, Lord, like, I heard about this man. I heard about everything that he done did. Like, you know, all the killings, all the stuff. He literally has been going against your people, okay? And he's over there, you know, like, why would I give sight back to my enemy? Ooh, Jesus. Mm-hmm listen child and so that's like a lot of us in this season and maybe that is you feeling that way towards somebody else or you could be feeling that way towards yourself okay and so and maybe it's you that is keeping you held hostage you know you're holding yourself hostage in this season whether it's mentally whether it's physically whether it's emotionally you yourself might have, might be holding yourself back because you are so focused on your mistakes and your flaws thinking that god cannot still use you and this passage alone is confirmation and shows that god will stop you in the midst of your track god will stop my god oh jesus i'm in somebody's business god will stop you in the midst of you going and walking towards destruction in the midst of you going to, to, to um, put somebody in captivity, in the midst of you going to go lie on somebody, in the midst of you going to go murder somebody, God will stop you in the midst of your track. Just to remind you of who he called you to be. Just to remind you of who he, of who you are. And some of you all have been stopped in the midst of your track before you even entered into destruction. Or if you're like me, I have a sibling where she is literally sitting in a cell incarcerated because of her actions. And even with me talking to her, I had to remind her of who she was and how she was not defined by her mistakes. Even though her mistake was great, 
she still was not defined by her mistake. And so this is a word to somebody. I don't know what lie, what enemy has been talking to you, what your past thoughts have been talking to you, or even the people around you, the whatever things that they have been saying to you in this season, God is here to say that you do, you are not defined by your mistakes. And where other people see your flaws, God sees potential. Remember that. Just type that in the comments. When others see my flaws, God sees my potential. And so even you yourself, when you make mistakes, God is not looking at you based on the mistakes that you made or based on the flaws that you have. God looks at you and says, I can use that. Let me give you Bible. <laughs> okay. Acts 9 verse 15 says, but the Lord said to Ananias, because the nice was sitting there going back to the Lord, like, Lord, look, this man then did X, Y, and Z, okay? And there's a lot of people that have been talking to other people on your behalf, trying to remind them of who you used to be, trying to remind them of all of your past mistakes. And they're like, look, they didn't did X, Y, and Z. This is why we can't have them. This is why we can't hire them. This is why we can't have them on our team. This is why we can't bless them. There's some people, my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's some people that have been wanting to promote you, but somebody has come about to remind them or to to tell them all of your past mistakes or to bring up your files from the past but God is saying baby I override every single file God said baby I override every single past mistake I override every single thing listen and in Acts 9 15 he says but the Lord said to Ananias go okay and he says this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Listen, God said, this is my chosen instrument. He said, this is somebody that is going to proclaim my name. When Ananias is saying, God, I just heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your people. And God is sitting up there, yeah, I know you heard those reports, but let me just tell you that this is my chosen instrument. But let me just tell you that this is my chosen one. And so I don't know who you are, but I know that this word is for somebody to remind you that no matter what your flaws are, embrace them. Embrace them. Stop trying to push your past mistakes to the back. Stop trying to, you know, push all of that stuff that you did to the back. No, no, no. The stuff that you did, whatever you committed, whatever you did, okay, that was not pleasing to God at that time. He's like, I need you to bring that to the forefront because that's what makes you unique. That's what makes you who you are. And so some of you all have been lying to your kids, to your family members, because you don't want people to really know who you are. You don't want people to know that you're a liar and you're a manipulator. You don't want people to know that you don't know how to take accountability. You don't want people to know, you know, that you have this lack mindset. You don't want people to know certain things. And so you hide under a mask. But God is like, I can only bless the authentic version of you. I'm going to need you to bring all of your past mistakes to the forefront. I'm going to need you to bring all of your flaws to the forefront because God is saying I'm still going to use you regardless I'm still going to use you regardless and so it doesn't matter how bad your life and, and, and the actions or the choices that you made in the past looks if God chose you that's it that's it and it literally says and Ananias goes and he heals Saul and it says, and immediately the scales fall from Saul's eyes and Saul comes back to himself. There's a lot of people where you just need to come back to yourself. Right now you have scales over your eyes and you may not be blind in the physical realm like Saul was, but you might be blind spiritually. You might be blind mentally. You might be blind emotionally. There's areas in your life where you have a blind spot. And God is like, I'm trying to take the scales off of your eyes 
so that you can fully come back to who you are and who I initially created you to be. And in that moment, Saul came back to himself. Listen, I don't know who you are, but it's time to come back to yourself. It's time to come back to yourself. It's time to walk in the authority and the anointing that God has already set apart for your life. You, specifically you. And so don't hide, don't run, don't try to push your past mistakes, your past hurt to the back. No, God said, I want to use it all for my glory. And so I don't know who you are, but baby, if you've been running the same way that a light came from heaven, Okay, and surrounded um, um, Saul, listen, God is about to shine his light on you. And when he shines his light on you, you are going to be held captive in his camp, in his kingdom. Well, you have no choice but to be healed. You have no choice but to be whole. You have no choice but to walk in the authority that God has given you. And so I don't know who this word is for, but it's a word of confirmation to somebody to say that when others see flaws, God sees your potential. And this is a reminder that I know that you have been seeing your flaws. And I know that other people have been shining a light on your flaws, but God is like, I only see your potential, my child. I only see your potential, my child. And this can happen one or two, we two ways. One or two ways. You can either submit and do it the easy way and walk back in the right direction. Or God is going to stop you in the midst of your tracks. And then you're going to have to walk on the path that he calls you to. But either way, you're going to suffer for his name. Either way, you are going to become who God created you to be. Whether it's now, whether it's later, it doesn't matter. I just want you to know that you yourself do not have any control over your life. I know that the the you know the world and people have been telling lies, saying that that they have you have control and you did no 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 baby, you have control over your mind. You have control over your actions to do the right thing. But baby, you don't have control over your future. I just want somebody to understand that. Because whatever God has spoken over your future, whatever God has spoken over your life, it has to come to pass. And it cannot come back to him void. And so God will move hell and high waters. He will move the mountains that you created in your own life. He will move it out the way just to make sure that what he spoke over your life comes to pass. And so listen, you might want to stop fighting it, okay? <laughs> Anyways, y'all, I pray that this word bless you. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video out. Don't forget to buy your daily planner, your devotional for women and girls only while it's still on sale. I love you all so, so much, and I will see you all next time. Bye.